But I'm sure you'll all recognise the legend in the saddle there, Johnny Murta. He's having a little time away from the saddle at the moment. He kindly joins us on the line. Good evening, Johnny. Yes, and how are you? Yeah, we're in great form, buddy. Now, first of all, how are you? <laughs> what happened and how are you? Well, of course, it wasn't my fault. No, of course. I was going down the slopes nice and gently and some guy crashed into me. I mean, where, where, what were you doing? Were you actually on the move at the time? Or were you stopped at the bottom or what happened? No, a big gang of us went up and we kind of stopped at the first ditch. The wife decided I'd bring my twins who are seven. I said, we'll jump off here. Orla brought the rest of the lads up to the top. She says, by the time you're down from the top, we should meet near the bottom. So we were just got off at that halfway station. We were going nice and nice and gently over and back using all the slope. And the next minute I was, um, I was trying to pick up my skis and some guy after crashing into me, so... Listen, I was just, I was lucky it was me he crashed into because the speed he hit me and the force he hit me, I was glad it wasn't one of the lads behind oh, me there. Oh, for sure, for sure. But I mean, he must have been coming down at a fair old lick to, to, to clatter into you. Which was it? Right, left, he, he did your collarbone. Luke knows all about that. I hope <laughs> you don't end up like him. <laughs> no, listen, I brought, it brought me my right collarbone, so, um, listen, it's the first time I ever broke a bone, so it was a bit of a, a bit of a shock. And I didn't really know what was happening. But, um... Um, it was uh, it was a bit of a shock, but uh, thankfully it was only a collarbone. And people say that it's, it's them jump jockeys are probably back right now by now. Yeah, well, <laughs> I tell you what though, they're sore, Johnny. The people you're right. People only say, oh, it's only a collarbone, but it hurts, doesn't it? I tell you, it was very, very sore. And mm. uh, now it's it's okay. So it's it's a week on now, um, or two weeks on now, and I can move it now. And it, it, but when you're lying in bed and you think it's grand, and you just move your arm in some certain way, you get that bad twinge. And I mean, so, Johnny, Johnny, you've you had that. You, you, this is early on in the holiday, and there's not a lot else to do, is there? <laughs> first day in the holiday, Jason. I'm going oh. to have a bit of, bit of lunch. First day in the holiday, I said to the guy, what else is there to do in Selback? He says, if you don't ski, there ain't a lot to do. <laughs> 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 so it was, ah, listen, the, the lads had a great time, and they're probably delighted I wasn't there bossing them around and telling them what to do, so... Um, no, it was it was it was a great holiday, great fun, we had a lot of great friends there and I, I was the I was the man on the ground organising the lunches. <laughs> 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 a nice for a change, but uh, pretty well. Hey, listen, we were looking at the the early shots there, Johnny, at a Ridgewood Pearl winning a Breeders' Cup. Absolutely fantastic. I remember I was there on the floor at that time. We're looking at you coming in now. I think this is up at Ascot when the, the owner didn't he drive four miles the other way, not to see another magpie or something. Yeah, Sean Coughlin, he was a great, great man. He was a very lucky owner. He had a great filly there in Bridgewood Pearl and won, she won a lot of races. He was a bit superstitious, but um, he, had, he had a lot of great times with her and we had, we had you know, the Breeders' Cup. It, it's a big meeting and to write a winner of that was, you know, huge for me at that part of my career. I mean, so Ridgewood Pearl was fantastic, Johnny. And then, I mean, from from an international point of view, I always tend to look back. I mean, you've had some tremendous jobs. We'll talk about them. But in 2000, you had a phenomenal Group 1 run, didn't you? Yeah, well, um, after, after Ridgewood Pearl was there, that was 95, and I thought it would, you know, promote me onto the international scene. But... Um, it, it was kind of the end of the season, and by the time the year came around next year, I'd forgotten about, you know. So it took until 2000 till I won the Derby on Sindar, and I suppose, like when you win the Derby, um, you know, you really, you really hit the, you, know, you really hit the, the highs then, you know. And from that year on, I was lucky Kieran Fallon got, well, it was lucky for me that Kieran got an injury in Ascot, and I got a lot of a lot of nice horses from Michael Stout, and I ended up having 12 Group Ones that year, and people says that will never happen again. Yeah, I mean, it was, a, it was a phenomenal success. When you think about horses like uh, Sindar, I mean, you're always talking about, oh, this one's a bit tricky, this one's hard to ride. What, what, what was he like as an individual? Because he looked an absolute dream. He was. He was a dream. He'd just jump off, sit second behind your pacemaker, get to the two mark or kick on. You know, he was very, very straightforward. Probably, probably didn't realise how good he was until after the arc around. You know, I think when he won the pre niel we we really knew then that you know he just just had to keep him in, in one piece for three weeks. He just but, seemed um, he just seemed to keep on improving, didn't he? You thought that he couldn't get any better. He struck. He thought right, well that's his ceiling. But he kept going forward. No, he did. He did, and he you know he, he had a great heart. He got his head down. He wanted to win, and listen, it was it, it was an easy easy ride. And you see him 
win the Irish Derby there. I think his last his last three Group Ones or his last two Group Ones were like that. He just there was never any doubt. Not too, not not too many things surprises now when we go to the races and we we look at different horses. I looked at a Swazir. I had to go down to. Uh, Newmarket and have a look at him when he when he came up to run there. I couldn't believe at him. Look, look, just looking at him in the flesh, he was unbelievable. Yeah, well, I I I, I rode him in Ascot and it took me. I was at my best to get him to the start to the start in one piece because he was very fresh. He was huge. Yeah, I was tr- I, I had arms on me like Popeye by the time I got to the start. <laughs> you know, and, <laughs> him. So there wasn't much riding on him either. I just he just left the stalls that quick. He just blitzed up. There. He won. He won the first day very well, and I said to the trainer, "Geez, he won well." He said, "I'm going to run him Thursday, and he'd be better." Yeah, I, I mean, said, well, it, he said because the freshness will be out of him by Thursday, because that's the way they train them over. They train them fresh for the first day, and then the second day, like he won, he won twice in that. And it was a great achievement at that, that time, and he he was he was huge. Yes, he was like he, when I seen him, he looked like a car horse. You know, he really looked like a car horse. But when them gates opened, he really could run, and he was he was a very very fast horse. Was he a little bit easier to get down the post on the second time? I didn't take any chances. <laughs> <laughs> Only a, a, barely out of a hat canter on the way to post. Trotting with his head over the rail. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Royal Rebel, Johnny, he must be happy memories for you because the Gold Cup, we go through these Group 1s, another race that has been a very happy hunting ground for you. Yeah, listen, he was a great horse, Jason, and uh, he, he was a horse, like, he, if he was out to, if he was out this time of year or around now, he wouldn't win a race, because it had to be very hard on him, and he'd only, he would only do 80% of what he could do. Bone idle, basically. He, could, he would only do 80% of what he would do, you know what I mean? He was bone idle, and you had to get really stuck into him, and I'll tell you, he, he, um, like, I won two Gold Cups, but I got, I think, four-day band the first day, and I think I got seven-day band the second day, and if I was riding him now, I wouldn't be riding from Ascot, <laughs> I'd say, until the York meeting, because that's the kind of ride he was. He was very lazy, very tough, and when he'd go a half a length up on, on, on a horse, he'd just stop. He would, he would just stop underneath you, so I always said to Mark Johnson, he's, he's, you know, he's doing 80% of what he could do. And... I- you we're talking about the, the Gold Cup, Johnny. You, you say Royal Rebel. What sort of machine was, was Yates? Because I was lucky enough to see him year after year after year, along with so many other people. He must have been a special part of the furniture at Ballyd Oil. He was. He was an absolute star. He was um, he had great presence about him. You'd see him in the barn there in the morning, and like he was in the place. You know, he really knew he was good. He knew he was the boss. And if the horse got too... So, like he'd, he'd kick them. He was he was like a two year old going around the place. He he was you know he won you know the gold cup over and over again. And to be part of it, I I, I felt a bit of pressure the first year because it was the first time I rolled him, and then I really wanted to win the second year because he, you know to, 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 to equal the record. And so was, he was was he was he a nice individual to deal with, Johnny? To ride was he straightforward? Um, well, as, as I said, he was he was he would kick a horse and he he had his own old ways about him, but. He, he, great ability, and I don't think he was just um, a two and a half miler. Because I think the second year I rode him, I just said, to him, maybe, maybe we should try him at the King George because he really, really loved Ascot. You know, Ascot brought out the best in him when he walked under the tunnel, Ascot, and he got out there in the big crowd. You know, got his blood up, and I thought, I, I thought maybe the King George might have been the a race he would have been competitive in. Yeah, I mean, he was uh, he certainly was uh, an unbelievable individual. Lots of emails coming in at wanting to ask you about Soviet Song. What did you think of her? I mean, she was she, she was special as well. Uh, I've ridden a lot of great horses. I'm really, really spoiled. You know, that kind of way, when you mention the names, it kind of, it kind of humbles you a little bit, you know. But Soviet Song, I went to work for James Fanshawe. I rode her in April in a listed race in... Um, in Kempton, the old Kempton on the grass, and she finished, I think, third, and James says, this is my best filly, so I was kind of going, geez, it's going to be a quiet year this year, this is my best <laughs> filly, but, <laughs> you know, that, that is just James, quietly, quietly, brought her along beautifully, and when she started kicking into gear there, mid-summer, fast ground, a mile, you know, she was, she was very special filly, she won the, the Falmont, you know, she won at Leopardstown, um, bit of traction, you know, picked up attraction really well, but, Great cruise and a great turn of foot, and you know James Fanshawe done a tremendous job. But he really, he really knew her, and as I said, I think she won four or four or five Group Ones for us. So it was great association with her and great association with James.
Yeah, certainly, certainly with James. About, about people you've ridden for, I mean, John Ox, obviously, Johnny, has been a massive part of your career. And we always talk about him as being such a gentleman, such a great trainer. We're looking at one of your many winners um, for John in the, in the Aga Khan Silks, of course. But you've had, you've had a, a tremendous working relationship with him. Is he uh, exactly the same as we all talk him up to be? He is. He's exactly the same. He's, you know, he's a gentleman, um, you know... He's, he's a great trainer. You know, he can get horses to win the first day of the season, and they just can, you know, they can they can go on and win, you know, Breeders' Cups. So he, he he keeps them at that peak. You like see the stars six Group Ones in a row. Like you know, he, that is, it just didn't happen. He does that with a lot of horses through, through their career. And as you said, what you know, when you see him, that's what, what you get. He's he's just a, a really really nice man. He's a gentleman, and I had you know great years there, and I'd um, you know. He, he, was, he was great to me, and I was lucky enough to learn a lot from him. He, he strikes me, Johnny, as one of the guys that if he was upset with you, he wouldn't raise his voice. He'd just look at you and shake his head, and you'd probably be more disappointed in yourself. Well, he didn't give out to me much. It was a couple of times he might just say, call up to the office. So when you heard that, you knew you were asking. <laughs> <laughs> but no, he, listen, he doesn't. He never raises his voice much. But as you say, you know, he, the way he looks at you sometimes is probably enough. But... Yeah. That doesn't happen often either. He's, you know, he's, he's pretty easy, pretty straightforward. He tells you what to do and he expects it to be done. And as you say, if he asks you to do something, you go and do it. You don't, you don't question it. Yeah, and um, moving on, Aidan O'Brien, tremendous time you had with the, the Bally Doyle juggernaut. I mean, just uh, the, the, the winners kept coming. We were looking at Duke of Marmalade there. We looked at Yates. There's been so many. But being part of that operation, Johnny, must have been a huge part of your career. Oh, yes, I said the year, uh, the year 2000 rode 12 Group 1 winners. My first year in Valley Dial rode 21 Group 1 winners. Oh, that's unbelievable. And, and as I said, it was like a juggernaut. Like, I was just going over to England every week and, I, you know, just, just white, you know, picking up Group 1 after Group 1. And I used to, I had Jimmy Fortune and Richard Hughes beside me and they'd be kind of saying, oh, we'll get you next week, you know. And I was just, you know, <laughs> I was just laughing at them, you know, because I said, listen, the next we bring over is better. Yeah. You know. <laughs> And we had just so many good horses, you know, Henry the Navigator, Duke of Marmalade, um, you know, Yates, just like one after the other were just, you know, brilliant, brilliant horses. And um, Bally Dial is a magical place. When you drive in the gates of Bally Dial and the Jinsky's on the left, it's just, you know, you know, lads, you said to me, Jesus, the long drive down to it, Johnny, you know. I'd say I'd nearly walk every morning yeah. to get down, you know, that kind of way. Yeah, for sure. There for... was there was great, great, great horses, and um, we had that, that, that first year, like, I just felt I was invincible. Well, you, you you would feel invincible. You're going out there, you're turning out there. I remember bumping into you, I think it was at Lingfield, and you, you walked past me going into the paddock or something, and you you had a big smile on your face, and you said, I've just got to point them. I'm just pointing them at the moment, and they were going in like arrows. Yeah, that was it. And the same in that, in, in the, like, the, I remember the week we worked before Royal Ascot, you know, we had uh, Henry the Navigator, I just said it in certainty, Duke of Marmalade, certainty, yeah, it won't get beat, you know. We just had, that, like, you know, one after the other, just one good horse after the other. And as I said, I'd love to be taking all the credit for them, but you, you just really had to point them. They were, they were so well trained, they were so well looked after, they were just prepared for the day. And, you know, the, you couldn't miss. Um, you talked about James Fanshaw. Also, William Haggish. You've had a tremendous time with him. We're going to have a little look at uh, Dancing Rain here, one of the many winners you've ridden for William. Um, and you two seem to gel well. Yes, well, William is, you know, he's a lovely man. He's a gentleman. Maureen is great. You know, Maureen says, I reminded of her dad, so for, I'm forever in love with her after saying that, even mentioning him in the same breath as her dad, you know. So they're a great team together. They're, they're, they've built up a, a, a great stable, and you know William has a lot, a lot of nice horses. So, and he knows, you know, when when William rings you like two weeks in advance and just says, "Where will you be on such a date?" And then I just say, "Where do you want me to be?" Because you know he, he he is it well prepared. Um, he's got a lot of nice horses coming through, and I've been very lucky for him. You know, we 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 seem to have hit it off together well. Yeah, target trainer. Now, when I spoke to you briefly this morning, you were there. I think you were talking to people who were on horses. You were busy round the yard. You're keeping yourself busy. We had Andrew on a little bit earlier on. Um, you're certainly keeping yourself very, very busy away from the saddle at the moment. 
Yeah, well, I, I said I was going to take, um, after the Christmas, I said I was going to take January off. So, you know, it's nice to have a break. Last year I went right through and I was just kind of a bit feeling a bit tired at the end of the year. You know, it was kind of, I was in Hong Kong, I was in Japan, and I just was feeling, I was feeling the pinch a little bit near the end. So I said, okay, Christmas, have a nice Christmas, go skiing, and then I'll take January off. So I'm probably, I have to take it off now anyway. But um, it, it's, it's, um, I, I'm busy in the yard. We've, 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 we've got them. Um, we've got a lot of horses in now. You know, last year I asked Andrew would he send over a few horses for the all weather because I decided I was going to go to Dubai for the full stint, and I needed to keep busy. And um, I went, you know, Andrew sent over five horses. He got five horses. And um, myself, I, got, I spoke to Tommy, and Tommy decided to take out his license again. I said, let's, you know, two of us get stuck into these and give them a go for the winter. And we had a bit of luck. Our first, our first winner, first runner won, and we, we had a bit more luck. And Andrew sent over another another six. And in that six, Royal Diamond came along. So... You know, we had we had eleven horses for um, half of the year, and then the end he sent over four more. So we had fifteen horses in all, and we just had you know we just had a, we had a great run. We had a lot of, we had a lot of nice horses, and it just they just seemed to improve. Uh, none more so than Ursa Major and Royal Diamond. Yeah, we just and go on. Sorry, they, Johnny. You know, they, they, you know, I was trying to think of what am I going to do after I ride, and I was kind of dabbling my foot in this. You know. You know, train and everybody keeps telling you, "Oh, this train is so hard, and you don't want to do this, and you don't want to do that." But like, I've been in horses since I was fifteen, so I don't think I'm going to be a, a doctor or anything at this stage of my life. So, <laughs> I, I I said, "Well, let's have a look at it. Let's have a look at it from from the training side of it." And listen, it is not easy. It's hard work. Um, but I'm honest. I'm hard working, and it's got me this far. And hopefully, as I said, when the time is right, it'll it'll it'll. It'll continue on to, 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 to hopefully one day being a trainer. Yeah, I mean, it's, a, it's another stepping stone in a tremendous career. And Johnny, we're, we're Ursa Major, Royal Diamond, they've been fantastic. And um, just having a quick word with Andrew earlier on, he's also talking about Foxtrot um, Romeo, of course, saying that he's an exciting prospect for next year. Well, this he year. He is, yeah. He came in there a couple of weeks ago. He's, he's a massive big horse, he's huge. Um, he, he, by looking at him, you'd think, you know, he definitely should improve at four. He's very quiet, he's very straightforward at the moment. We're only hacking him round, but uh, we're, listen, we, we've got a lot of nice horses now from Andrew. Andrew sent us over a lot of nice horses, and you know I'll be expecting. Uh, you know we we've got a nice staff as well. We've got a nice staff base as well here. So um, happy yard, happy trainer, happy horses. Who knows what can happen? Who knows? But you know, listen, got to ask you quickly. What about Joseph O'Brien, first um, jockeys championship? What about him as a rider? Very good rider. You know, he's been there, he's been in the Jeep for all those years, he's riding work very young. Um, when Aidan is telling you everything and you're riding all the horses' work, you can't lose. You've seen that the first year, you know what I mean? Yeah. And he's riding for a, a very powerful stable, but take nothing away from him. He rides very well, and he's a nice lad, and everyone's saying about his weight, but he seems to have it under control. Yeah. You know, it's, it's always hard there, that 18, 19. And if you can get over that, maybe, you know, who knows? No, he's he's very dedicated, and you know, when you're riding for Bally Doyle and them horses are trained by Aidan O'Brien, as I said, you just point them in the right right, right direction. You, most of them are going to win. The best horse nearly wins nine out of ten times. Yes. Richard Hughes's first championship. You've known Hughesy for many years. Brilliant. Delighted for him. He, you know, he's he, he's he's such a nice guy. He's um, I admire him. He's after doing really well. He keeps his weight down. He's riding for you know his father-in-law. He rides. He rides. Um, he, he gets in a bit of trouble from the punters now and again, but um, I think that's the way he rides. You know, sometimes I was just saying to him, "Just kick him on three out." I don't ride like that, he says, and that's that's him. He likes to keep them on the bridle. Last one go for his grip, nearly always wins. And you know, he's he's a, he's a top-class rider. He's great hands. I love watching him riding them. He's a bit like Paul Carberry. See, talking about Paul Carberry, you know, he's in the same mode. He just he, he, he just, he makes it look so easy at times. But well, Johnny, we've got to go back now because the next race is coming up in Dundalk. I could talk to you for absolutely hours. It's been great for you to, to join us and um, we wish you a speedy recovery and uh, best of luck for, for the upcoming season, buddy. See you, Jason. Thank you. Bye, Luke. Good luck. Cheers, Johnny. Bye, bye.